Hello, this is Ralf Brenninek from Pixelasm with a follow-up personal project and behind-the-scenes video for a real-time 3D interactive projection mapping using Unity 3D, Leap Motion, and Arduino or Uniduino as it is called in Europe. All connected with C, C Sharp, and some glue. As freelance 2D and 3D interface and motion graphics designer, I've been mainly working for ad agencies, TV stations, and the telecommunications and automotive industry. So, besides the automotive demonstrators I help to create, I've mostly produced non-interactive, non-physical stuff. That's also why I started this personal project, following up on my automotive projection mapping from late 2013. The installation you are about to see is more like a game prototype in the means of visualizing the core of a concept instead of a full application. Also, this is the first time I'm using this DIY teleprompter I built mostly from IKEA parts, to which I will also post a link in the description of this video somewhere down here. I will start this video with a capture of the projection showing the interaction and the game loop, after which I will show the hardware I used, followed by a look into the Unity 3D scene I built and closing this video with a personal conclusion. Here you can see the Unity scene projected onto the cube and the status bar projected onto a picture frame. Normally the leap motion is at the position of the camera, but for this demonstration I put it beside the hypercube. I'm using three gestures to control the setup. First, a pinch with the right hand, which enables you to pick up a pet, and second, holding both hands close together for three seconds to reset the game. The third gesture is dependent on the left hand's rotation to determine in which direction to rotate the hypercube. So the game loop of this prototype is to find a pet in each world and place it on its cushion. In this setup, a very simple task. But yet again, this prototype was meant to learn more about the needed soft and hardware and not so much about gameplay mechanics. Here you can see most of the setup. Starting with the leap motion, which basically works like a camera and sends pictures to Unity 3D. These pictures are analyzed within Unity and converted into an abstract three-dimensional hand model, which are used to drive the animation and also to send signals to the Arduino board, to which I added an Adafruit motor shield, which drives the NEMA 23 stepper motor which you can see over here. I also added some velcro straps to hold the Arduino board in place, as well as some heat sinks for the stepper motor to cool it down, because different to DC motors, stepper motors get hotter when they appear to be standing still, and although there are ways around that issue, that's a topic for another discussion. As you can see, the timing belt which is driving the turntable is connected to the stepper motor's shaft without any transmission which makes the setup very simple mechanically. Because it is rather hard to turn one's hand more than 180 degrees, I went for a threshold approach, so that when the user's hand turns more than 0 degrees relative to the leap motion, the hypercube turns to the right and the other way around. To get the Unity scene projected onto the Hypercube, I used my old but trusty 720p beamer, which I also used for the automotive projection mapping I did before. Let's take a look at the Unity 3D scene. It contains all geometry in the same space, which is physically impossible except for in a four-dimensional cube, also called Hypercube or Tesseract. In my case, you see other content depending on which side you look at the cube. This effect was achieved by the portal script of Ilya Suzlatnitsky and works like masks in After Effects of Photoshop. So when I turn the portals back on, 
you can see the effect in the game view on the right hand side, which is also the final image projected onto the cube taking into account all effects and assets. Speaking of which, I relied heavily on the Unity Asset Store, because this project was not about learning how to create assets, but instead learn how to connect soft and hardware. That's also why I use C Sharp instead of Playmaker or a similar node-based programming interface. I got to admit though, that I already had some basic programming knowledge before starting this, because in my early freelance years I've been doing some action script and later expressions for After Effects. Nothing serious in terms of application development, but definitely a good basis. What also helped a lot was the Leap Motion software developer kit, which you can plug into your Unity project quite easily. And although they've been working on a new release called Orion, which is set to enhance the experience by more accurate detection algorithms, I did not want to fiddle around with the beta and stayed with version 2.3.1. After all, I'm not a hardcore software developer and did not want to change a key component in the middle of this personal project. So, what did I learn from this personal project? Well, like in software, there are also a thousand ways to build hardware and you never know for sure which way is the best until you've tried it. I'd say... No matter how good you're planning, personal experience always outweighs that. Also, for all the designers out there who have never written a line of code, I'd say just give it a try. A few simple lines can get you very far and enable you to create prototypes to present to your clients, which in the end might land you a job. Also, you'll be able to communicate and work more efficient with your developer team. So, if you liked this video, hit the like button. If you didn't, I invite you to tell me why. And if you've got any questions or recommendations, comment on this video or contact me via rb at pixelasm.com or facebook.com slash pixelasm or twitter.com slash ralfbrenninek. Thanks for watching and goodbye.